Hello and welcome to Iron Harvest Operation Eagle. If you watched my review that I released a few months ago, you may remember that one of the things I said they could improve in the game is to add some flying mechs to really add another dimension to the battles. It appears the devs have listened because in this latest DLC, the brand new faction, of course, has some flying mechs. Usonia is the latest faction to be added, and if you can't tell from the branding all over them, they're the game's fictional version of the USA. Of course, with them, they are bringing a whole new roster of units, some of them alternate versions of units already in the game, and some of them totally new, such as all the brand new flying mechs. This video will break down every unit in their roster and give you their strengths, weaknesses, and my personal tips on how to use them. I'll be starting with the infantry, then mechs, then heroes, and then finally bunkers, since they do also have a unique set of those. If you'd like to jump around the video, then there are of course chapters in the description. Starting first with our tier 1 infantry, first of all, we have the engineers. Just like every other faction, Usonian engineers can build stuff, repair stuff, and are useful for having when you need to repair mechs regularly in your army. These are the only units in the roster that can build recruitment buildings, bunkers, sandbags, barbed wire, and of course landmines. Aside from that, they basically don't do anything else. They're only equipped with very weak pistols, and they will fail in combat against pretty much anything that isn't an engineer that's weaker than them. Don't use them, they are engineers and should only be building, and the only, only, only time they should fight is on a mounted gun. As for their abilities, they get Battle Cry, which negates suppression and increases their rate of fire for a short time. Again, most infantry has this, but they shouldn't really be using it. My advice to using them in battle is to use them to build bunkers to hold choke points in key positions. You can also use them to repair your mechs when the enemy isn't nearby, and as I said, keep them on mounted guns, because once the enemy retreats, you can take them off the gun, repair it, and then throw them straight back on. Next up, we have Volunteers, which are the Usonian Riflemen. They are your average rifle infantry and are decent versus other infantry, but will only win a 1v1 when they have the flanking advantage and are in cover. They are quite quick, so can be anywhere on the map relatively fast, but you're not going to get anything surprising here. It's a rifleman unit, it performs pretty much the same as all the other rifleman units in the game. They don't do any damage versus armor, so once the enemy has mechs, they'll be pretty useless and die very quickly. And they also don't really have any abilities, other than the battle cry that the engineers have, and that's only really good for increasing their very meager damage output. Of course, you're going to be using these guys in the early game in plentiful quantities to rush to secure those resource buildings as soon as possible. You can also have them rush up to weapons crates to upgrade them to hopefully better weapons to make them into a much more useful unit. Keep them in cover and flanking enemies if you can to maximise their power, and phase them out as soon as possible since other units are them, but better. Our next units are paratroopers, and they are literally volunteers, but can be deployed anywhere on the battlefield from their parachutes. This makes them great since they can flank anything, but aside from that, so once they are deployed, they are basically regular riflemen, so you'll want to use them about the same. Just be sure to use that deployment to get the flank on the enemy, because once it's done, that's all it can do. Next up are medics, and would you believe they specialise in healing allied infantry units. They save you tons of time because you don't have to send your units all the way back to base to heal, and instead can allow them to heal quite quickly in the field at the cost of resources. They have pretty much the same battle effectiveness as engineers, so you don't really want them to be fighting unless they absolutely have to, since they only have access to very weak pistols. You want to keep them on the back lines and then bring them in to heal your infantry in between enemy waves. They of course have the ability to heal, which restores health and fallen units to infantry. And once they've reached a certain level, you can consume the unit to create a medical tent, which allows other units to resupply and reinforce from there. Be aware that this building is quite weak, so you want to keep it defended. Our next unit is the Field Cannon. It does great damage versus armor of all kinds and has a fantastic range. If the team is killed or need to retreat, any other unit can mount them and also enemies, so try not to let that happen. As of all mounted guns, these guys are extremely slow and it does take them quite a while to set up, so you want to set them in defensive positions and wait for the enemy to come to you, rather than using them to attack for the most part. They also have a limited firing arc, so if the enemy gets out of it, then you'll have to turn around and it is a pain as it takes so much time and you will likely be swarmed before you can complete this action. They obviously don't have any abilities since they are just a mountable tool. As I said, you want to get them set up where you think you're going to fight the enemy and try to keep enemy mechs in the area so they can fire on them as much as possible. If they get surrounded or flanked, just drop the gun and come back for it later. Otherwise, you will definitely lose the firing team. Our final tier 1 infantry is the Skybike and it is the first of our flying units. It is a decently fast flying motorbike and does look pretty hilarious when it's zooming around the map. It has decent machine gun damage which is pretty good versus other low armor targets such as infantry or very weak airships. Unfortunately, this damage drops off very quickly versus any form of armor, and once it's going against heavy mechs, it may as well be shooting frozen peas. It also has very low armor itself, so it doesn't take particularly long to get killed by high damage enemy targets. And it also doesn't have access to any abilities. In battle, I use their fast speed to get around the back of enemy infantry, and shoot them in the back to get that flanking damage. It's also handy to make sure they aren't the main focus of the enemy, as if they are, they will not last too long. They're also a great unit for zipping around the map to defend key resource points as the enemy tries to take them, as nothing else is really that fast. Moving on now to the tier 2 infantry, first of all we have machine gunners. They are a great anti-infantry unit and excel at mowing down legions upon legions of enemy riflemen. 
They also provide suppressing fire, which prevents enemy infantry movement and forces them onto their bellies, which greatly reduces their speed, but also the chance of you hitting them. Unfortunately, this fantastic damage comes at the cost of very slow movement, and it also takes them a while to set up and fire. So if the enemy moves and they need to turn around and fire, then it's going to take them a while and it leaves them quite vulnerable. It's also quite a pain if you need to retreat them, because they will not be able to outrun even the most basic of enemy riflemen. You also have the ability Battle Cry, which of course negates suppression and increases their rate of fire for a short time, which is actually pretty useful. I normally use these lads in bunkers, since they do great anti-infantry damage, and they can also be set up to cover key positions outside of bunkers, just always make sure they're in cover. I see them as more of a defensive than offensive unit, since they are so slow to set up that if you try to attack with them, chances are, by the time they're actually firing, they'll probably have lost half the unit. Next up we have the anti-armor gunners. Now the anti-armor damage allows them to take on even some of the most toughest mechs as long as they aren't being focused. And it means they're also pretty good at taking out enemies in cover since explosive attacks will destroy the cover. Like the machine gunners they are quite slow so can get run down by even the most basic enemy riflemen. And the fact that they are taking on armor most of the time means that they are often in the way of mech damage which tends to burn through their limited health quite quickly. They are only infantry after all. They of course also have the battle cry ability. In battle, they are quite a decent and cheap anti-armor unit, but try to bring something else to attract attention, otherwise they will fall so quickly to mech weaponry. They're also decent for taking out buildings and cover, since that explosive damage means they don't necessarily have to hit their target to do damage to it. Just make sure to get them on the sides or the flanks of the enemy mechs if you can, to avoid them getting melted. Next up, we have the S355 wards. These are basically engineers in exosuits, but they can only repair, they cannot build any buildings. Their repair function of course works on friendly mechs and structures, so they are great for nipping around the map to do the odd bunker repair or any of your mechs are on the front lines. They can also do decent damage to mechs with their welding torches and are also relatively high HP and have decent armor versus light assaults. Unfortunately they have no ranged weapons so can be easily outranged and outran since they aren't the fastest things in the world and of course their lack of ability to build anything is quite a bummer. They also will be taken out quite quickly if they're going against any super heavy mechs, especially if they're getting focus. They also have the ability to build an aid station which consumes unit to create a structure that allows infantry and exosuits to replenish their HP and lost units. This is fairly similar to the medic ability. In battle I was using them to repair my structures out on the front lines and if they get wrapped up in battle I had them engage with enemy armor and attack them in the back since they aren't great versus infantry but do decent versus light mechs as long as they have backup and aren't being focused. If they are the only fighter, I would normally back them up since they cannot do it alone, especially if the enemy has infantry, for whatever reason they just can't take them out. Of course, in between enemy waves or even during enemy waves, they are great at repairing your mechs. Next up we have the heavy machine gun, which is a brilliant anti-infantry mountable turret. It's kind of like the machine gunners, but a giant turret that does a lot more damage and covers a larger area. It can be used by any infantry unit and of course provides defense from the frontal fire for the firing team, and this is resistant to most non-armor piercing damage. They are very, very slow, like all mounted turrets, and have a very limited firing arc, so if the enemy gets around you, it is a massive pain in the ass to turn around and you will likely get swarmed. And of course, they have no abilities since it's a mountable. For their use in battle, I set it up to hold key locations as an alternate or reinforcement to a bunker. I would move only when needed and never when enemies are closing in, otherwise they will get swarmed and taken out easily, as they are so, so slow to move. If they get swarmed, then of course, just abandon the turret and pull the unit back unless you want to lose the whole unit. You can always come back for it later, even if the enemy decides to take it. Now, because this early access is a slight bug and it says we have heavy machine gun twice, I'm guessing they actually intended to give them a mortar rather than a second one of these. So it's of course a mortar, which means it deals good long range attacks that deal explosive damage that is great for taking out infantry from a range. If they're in cover, if they're in a building, if they're in the open, mortars are great because explosive damage hits everything. Of course, since it's a turret, it can be mounted by pretty much anything. And if the firing team is killed, you can also bring in something else. As with all turrets, it is course very, very slow and has that limited firing arc, so if the enemy gets around to you, then it's a pain to slowly turn them around. That being said, it's a mortar, so it should be at your back lines, so if the enemy gets around you, you've probably got more problems than the mortar being not able to fire. Of course, no abilities, and in battle, I would keep them on the backs of the front lines, covering key areas and focusing on infantry, since their damage is less effective versus mechs. Again, if they get swarmed, then it's best to just abandon the turret and come back for it later once you can push the enemy back. But as I said, if it gets to the point where your mortar is getting swarmed by enemies, you probably have a lot more problems. Next up, we have another flying unit, the airlift. This is an infantry transport unit, and though it's slightly faster than walking speed, it's not exactly zooming. It also has fairly high HP, so it can take a light beating while getting units into battle, but its damage is just pathetic. It has one mounted MG, and that's about it. It doesn't do a particularly large amount of damage and has trouble taking out engineers. It also doesn't allow the units inside to fire, which is just absurd, because if it did, it'd be a fantastic unit, but without it, it's pretty much just a big bus. To be honest, by the time you unlock it, you want to be starting to phase out infantry anyway, so it comes just a little bit too late. 
and it also has no abilities. In battle, I honestly keep them either at base or at the back of my front lines to ferry troops back and forth from base. Now, it isn't the fastest thing in the world, but when it's carrying machine gunners, it is a little bit faster, so it is kind of useful if you have the space for it. Do not get them involved in combat at all, since they really don't do any damage whatsoever and will quickly die if they get focused. Our final infantry unit, and you're going to have to forgive my pronunciation here, is the Hashashins. It is only available via Sita, which is one of the faction leader's abilities. They are sword infantry, so are great versus other infantry in close quarters. They're also extremely fast and can go into stealth when stood still. Upon leveling them up, they can even use mini grenades to deal damage and disrupt enemy formations. Now, they don't have the most HP and don't really do a lot of damage versus armor, but that's not really what they were designed for anyway. As I mentioned, their ability mini grenades allows them to toss smaller grenades that deal a little bit less damage than regular ones, but still disrupt enemy formations. As for using them in battle, you want to summon them when Sita is getting swarmed and focus the infantry nearby to her to quickly take them out and basically just give her time to escape. When they're not fighting, you want to keep them still in places you want to keep an eye on since they will be in stealth after not moving for a while so the enemy will not see them warding. Now we come to the mechs, starting of course with the tier 1 M29 Salem. This bad boy has dual machine guns on the arms that literally just melt through infantry. He also has an independently firing machine gun on its head, which means it can fire two units with his arms and another unit with its head, or focus all three on one. Now, it doesn't have the most armor, so it can go down quite fast to armor piercing, and it also doesn't have the best damage versus heavy armor. This unit is exclusively meant to be used for taking on infantry. He has the ability Overcharge, which allows it to inflict increased damage to armor at the cost of health. This is kind of a double-edged sword, since yes, it will mean that it does better armor piercing damage, but it will also die even faster to armor piercing damage. As for its use in battle, you just have it weighed into enemy infantry and focus fire them one unit at a time until they are all retreated or taken out. It can do okay versus flying units, but doesn't have the best anti-armor, so it does struggle if it's going against, well, armor. And as you might be able to assume, that means it also struggles versus pretty much all other mechs. Apart from when using the overcharge ability, as I said, you'll probably just kill yourself even faster. If you want to go against mechs, then be sure to bring something else. For example, our next unit, the ZR3 Paul Revere, is a fantastic flying gunship. It deals great area damage versus infantry with rocket barrages, and is also a decent anti-air fighter with long range and high damage missiles. Now it is a little bit slow turning once it gets going, it's fast mind you, but turning around is definitely not its strong spot, so if you need to retreat it, be sure to do it in plenty of time, otherwise it will die turning around before it gets a chance to retreat. Now it does struggle once there are high armor ground mechs as the rockets are only really great versus infantry, but if you can shoot them in the rear, it doesn't do too bad. He has the ability boost which allows the unit to fly rapidly in a specified direction. This is great for moving in and out of battle in a pinch. As for using them in battle, they are a really great unit for taking on all kinds of units. They can take on infantry in cover or not with explosive missiles. They can take on lighter mechs, especially if they can get a shot in the rear. And they can even take on some other flying units with some decent air dominance. You just need to be careful that they don't get too focused fire because they don't have the most health in the world and they are still quite lightly armoured. Our final tier 1 mech is the M8 Atux. And no, that is not a spelling mistake. It's a great little kind of land submarine unit that can deploy to become a mortar. It has very powerful mortar attacks versus infantry, be it in cover, in a building, in the open, it's going to get them. It also has stealth, which allows it to sneak in and out of combat, which is handy for keeping it alive. Now, it doesn't really have a way to attack units nearby, so once they close in, it can't really do anything. And it's also defenseless against flying units since, well, it's a mortar. Mortars rely on hitting the ground, and, well, in the air, there's not really any ground. It also has the ability Rapid Insertion, which allows it to instantly summon a unit of paratroopers nearby to it to reinforce itself and keep enemies at a distance. For their use in battle, I like to set them up to defend key areas like a mortar turret, but it's slightly faster and can move around in stealth, allowing you to set up in less expected locations. If it gets closed in on, just retreat as it has no answer for nearby enemies and you're better off just surrendering the position and coming back for it later. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, the tier 2 mechs, starting with the M19 Nox. This has a whole host of weaponry to attack most targets and deal a lot of damage quickly. It's basically a big metal box with all the weapons stuck to it and is also relatively fast for being, well, a box. But for its weaknesses, it is quite a large boxy target, so it's very easy to hit from all forms of enemy damage. And it doesn't have the most health in the world, so against high damage, it won't last very long. As for its abilities, it has the passive hardened frame, which reduces incoming damage, which is nice, but still, it's not the toughest. As for use in battle, the amount of weaponry on this thing means it can take on most enemies fairly easily. It doesn't have the best range though, so make sure to get it in close range and have it take some backup so it isn't getting focus fired. Also might be a good idea to repair it in between battles, otherwise it will fall quite quickly. Other than that, just sit back and watch the fireworks. Our next unit is the M22 Stark. This is a devastating melee mech that deals extremely heavy damage to extremely heavy armored targets, so it can punch well above its own weight class with ease. It also has flamethrowers, which make it decent at taking out infantry and a huge amount of HP, meaning it can just sit there and take punishment over and over and over again and just keep coming. 
Unfortunately, being such a tank means it is quite slow, not the slowest, but not the fastest for sure. This means it really can't catch up and finish the job if the target runs. It also doesn't really have an answer for flying units, so needs some backup there. As for its abilities, it has Berserk, which is a passive, which means it deals more damage the lower its HP gets. It also has Emergency Shutdown, which puts units into shutdown, but allows it to rapidly regenerate some HP, but is totally vulnerable for the duration. Using these guys in battle is pretty straightforward. Have it wade in and take on the toughest of the enemy mechs in melee. You obviously want to escort it with some good anti-air, otherwise it is defenseless. And in between battles, use that shutdown function to repair itself because it's just free healing. Our next unit is another flying unit and it is the ZR-25 Samson. This is a flying fortress that automatically produces drones that drop explosive payloads to ground-based targets. This deals massive area damage versus infantry, but punches hard enough to get through most armor and structures from a very large range. Unfortunately, being this large means it is dummy thick at moving and turning, so will get taken down unless you start to retreat at about 50% HP, which no one wants to do. It is not the best versus other flying targets since its damage output is super duper low, so it can be taken out by much cheaper mechs. Its drones can also be destroyed by anti-air and flat cannons, making it totally useless until you take them out. As for its abilities, you can rush production, which allows you to spend resources to quickly replenish those drone supplies, as when they get destroyed, it does need to build them again. Using these guys in battle, you want to focus all enemy ground units with the bomb dropping drones from a very long range. Keep this at the back kind of like a mortar, and then slowly move it in as you need to take on further and further away targets. If it gets attacked via air, then get some backup as soon as possible, as it isn't the best at defending itself or taking out other air troops. If the drones keep getting taken out, then take out what's shooting them before sending this guy back, otherwise you're just wasting your time and resources. Our final flying unit is the gunship. And would you believe it, it does pretty much what it says in the tin. It's basically a massive cannon on a balloon with a dude holding an LMG on the top. It deals huge bonus to all ground targets from a fairly high range and is effective versus mechs and infantry due to the high damage explosive shots. It is however fairly slow, though still faster than the Samson, but still, it wants to retreat early if it needs to survive. It is also not the best in air-to-air -air combat since it is literally just a dude with an MG. It doesn't have any abilities, and in battle, I have it focus all enemy ground units with that massive cannon, in particular high armor targets because it penetrates straight through it. You can't really go wrong since explosive damage makes it great versus all targets, although similar to the Samson, it needs backup versus air since a guy on an MG can only do so much for you. Now we come to the heroes, starting with Sita Al-Hadid. She carries a rifle that has a massive range and allows her to cut down enemy infantry with ease. She's also extremely fast, so can get around the map very quickly. She can use her eagle to help keep an eye on enemy units, or summon it to herself to increase her own view range. And she can also summon sword infantry to protect herself. Now she doesn't have the most HP, so will fall versus even basic infantry if she gets surrounded, and her damage drops off when she isn't going against infantry. As I mentioned, her eagle provides increased range when it is with her, and can also be sent to follow enemy units and provide vision over and around them. She also has the ability to summon those hashashins that I mentioned. These are those sword wielding infantry, which can absolutely evaporate enemy infantry. As for her use in battle, you want to get her behind cover, flanking the enemy if possible since she's so speedy, this shouldn't be too much of a challenge, and have her focus fire on the most elite enemy infantry you can. Use her eagle to keep an eye on key enemy units like heroes or dangerous mechs, or just have it with her to increase her view range. If she gets swarmed by infantry, summon those assassins and back her up and they will take out most infantry with ease. Our next hero is William Mason. This guy is basically a dude piloting a heavy exo suit. The suit makes him faster and deal a large amount of armor piercing damage with that massive cannon. He also can exit the suit and leave it as a turret and move around as a heroic single infantry unit. He can also summon the suit nearby to himself and of course summon new ones if it gets destroyed. Speaking of which, when he's in the suit and it reaches 0 HP, he just exits it and then gets his whole new health bar back, although he's much weaker in this form. That being said, it doesn't have the most health in either form, so it kind of makes up for him having two. As I mentioned, his abilities are he can exit the suit and leave it as a turret, summon it to his location when he's outside of it, and when in the suit, reaching 0 HP, he just exits it rather than dying. As for his use in battle, have him focus armored targets with his mech or focus on infantry and cover since his explosive shots will take out both with ease. If you need him holding a location, then have him exit the mech and get into cover to get two units for the price of one to do twice the damage. If he loses the mech, then have him retreat until he can get another, as he will quickly fall if focused without it. Our final hero is George Mason. This guy can go against pretty much anything because he is just that huge and that powerful. He has mounted MGs all over the ship that can easily kill infantry. He also has massive front and rear mounted cannons for annihilating enemy armor and nearly 1700 HP and medium armor so it can take a huge amount of punishment. Unfortunately, being such a large lad, he is very, very slow and he also needs to be facing sideways to do most of the damage so getting into battles, it does take him quite a while to properly set up. He's also huge so it's quite an easy target but again, that HP pull is so massive it takes quite a while to chip through it all. 
As for his abilities, he can drop a smoke screen directly below him to obscure the visibility of enemy units. He can also dispense a massive flamethrower, which I'm just going to call the Wall of Fire, from the front of his airship that literally melts anything if it isn't armor. Buildings, infantry, it's all the same, it all melts. For his use in battle, honestly, there are a few things he cannot do, but his speciality is getting into the middle of the enemy lines so his multiple mounted weapons can fire from all sides. If he starts to get focus fired and take too much damage, it's honestly probably better to just try and push through since he's so slow that running is hardly possible. And just make sure you're getting close to make the most of all of his damage, including that beautiful wall of fire. Now we finally come to the buildings, aka the bunkers. First of all, the tier 1 bunker has 350 HP and, like any other bunker, provides protection for units inside and only does as much damage as units inside. So if you have rifles in there, they'll do about as much damage as riflemen. However, if you have machine gunners in there, then they'll do about as much damage as machine gunners. Tier 2 increases the HP to 500 and it now has a flamethrower that can attack in an arc towards the front. This literally burns up infantry, but it doesn't do too much to armor. And finally, at tier 3, it has 750 HP and now also has a beacon that can summon units of paratroopers to land nearby. It isn't the best since it doesn't really have an answer for armored units, but hey ho, what are you going to do? And that concludes it. That is how to use every single unit in Usonia. If you enjoyed this video, then do be sure to leave a like. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're enjoying the Iron Harvest content, then be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd like to take this time to thank all supporters of the channel, in particular, Kobe said so, Nifty Norm. I thank you every single time, but really, supporting me at that tier is quite incredible. One more time, thank you so very much for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.